So a whirlwind of events is happening in the smartphone world right now. Samsung is releasing new phones that are going to be packed with novel AI functions. The company promises that the phones will be able to translate languages during calls, search for things by circling them in a picture, and even help you edit photos with Photoshop-like capabilities. This means two main things to us as consumers. We might be preparing to say goodbye to smartphones whatsoever. On the bright side, and we are, we'll get to experience cool new features and improvements in our phones. In 1994, the Motorola 888 was a hit, but it only gave you 15 minutes of talk time a month. Wow! Then Motorola came out with the Razer V3, thin, sleek, and packed with features like texting and games. Ooh. In 2007, Apple changed the world with their first iPhone. It wasn't just an upgrade, it completely flipped the script on how we see phones. It introduced a touchscreen. Before iPhone, most phones had physical buttons or keyboards. It also gave us App Store, made it easy to access internet wherever you were, and of course, had a great built-in camera. Today, we have an iPhone 15 and live in a world where most everyone has a smartphone. Over 2 billion smartphones have been sold all over the world. Nearly 7 out of 10 people on the planet own a smartphone now. The new generation has been using smartphones since birth, so they won't be impressed much by new functions. And they won't strive to buy all new models. And sure, these new models are faster, snappier, and take amazing photos. But if we take a closer look, they're pretty similar in how they look and work. It feels like we hit the ceiling. This is why smartphones might go out of fashion in the future. Progress keeps moving forward. If companies want to make successful sales, they need something groundbreaking. Now, we don't just look for ways to make our screen sharper or our connection faster. We're looking for big, fundamental changes in how we use technology every day. So we have two options – keep improving current phones or introduce something entirely new to the market. There are a couple of crazy ideas. Some TV shows have shown futuristic transparent phones with holographic displays, but that's more of a sci-fi idea than a real trend. The highest priority is improving battery life. Here, graphene batteries show a lot of promise. They could make your phone last a whole week with just one charge. Graphene consists of a super-thin layer of carbon atoms arranged in a unique pattern, like a honeycomb. This structure gives graphene amazing properties. It conducts electricity and heat really well. It's super flexible and strong, and it's incredibly lightweight. It can be used to make supercharged batteries. They can store and release energy super quickly, which means your gadgets can charge up in a flash. Companies are already working on batteries, but the main problem is to figure out how to make them in large quantities without spending too much money on production. Phone cameras got a great upgrade. Now we have a 100K zoom and can take pictures of the moon with almost telescope-like quality. But there's still a lot of work to be done on front cameras and image processing with AI. 2010s was a selfie era. Seems so long ago. We introduced front cameras to the market, and suddenly, smartphones weren't just for taking photos of the world around us. They were also for capturing ourselves in the moment. Well, the 20s might become the AI image era. A couple of years ago, AI and machine learning made their way into smartphones. Phones started using AI to enhance photo processing, introducing features like portrait mode and improved HDR processing. And companies don't plan to stop here. With AI, smartphones can now enhance image quality, recognize scenes and objects, and even stabilize shaky videos in real time. With that, together with the rise of VR and 3D capture, the future of smartphone photography looks incredibly exciting. In general, augmented reality, or AR, and artificial intelligence will become the main characters of our future. Technology is becoming more immersive. Tech companies want to blend digital stuff seamlessly with our real world. To do that, they might, for example, replace our phone screens with something cooler and more interactive. Some envision smart glasses or headsets 
that make technology invisible by integrating it into our surroundings, like Apple Vision Pro. AI shows a lot of promise and will keep improving. That means smartphones might eventually evolve into digital assistants, seamlessly helping us with tasks like ordering food or booking flights. Regular phones just do basic stuff like calls and texts, but AI power gadgets can do way more. They can handle messages, voice commands, and even tell you stuff like how many calories are in your food and pile on the guilt. AI can already come up with tons of text in no time, thanks to cool tools like OpenAI's ChatGPT. And each new model of GPT gets smarter and smarter. Not just in writing, but in real-world stuff, too. AI is improving. In the future, it'll be able to do everything, from correcting your yoga poses with a webcam to helping lawyers review contracts faster. It may sound scary, but AI experts say that although there are healthy concerns about AI, we shouldn't freak out about it. Researchers are approaching it carefully and realistically. AI is very far from actually becoming conscious or anything like that. Instead, we should embrace its potential and not let fear hold us back. Hmm, sounds a little naive, doesn't it? Phones aren't the only thing that's anticipating huge changes. Humane Inc. is working on gadgets like the AI Pin. It's a tiny device you wear, like a pin, which you can control with your voice and hand movements. It replaces screens by projecting information onto your hand using lasers. It would be like having a subtle personal assistant with you all the time. Of course, not everyone is on board with that idea. It would mean that this device is tracking you at all times, which raises a lot of privacy concerns. The developers tried to solve it by making the device only listen when you want it to and have special sensors to keep your info safe. But it still requires a lot of work. Another promising thing is brain-computer interfaces, or BCIs. Now, BCIs are like bridges between our brains and the outside world. They pick up signals from our brains using electrodes, which are tiny sensors, and send those signals to a computer. Then the computer turns those signals into actions. That would help you move a prosthetic hand or even control a smartphone. BCIs are used for two main things. Helping people with medical needs and making everyday life easier. In medical settings, BCIs can assist people who have trouble communicating or moving. For example, people with ALS. In daily life, BCIs can help us focus better while driving improve learning, or control devices with our thoughts instead of our hands. But making BCIs work perfectly isn't easy. One big challenge is making sure the electrodes that pick up brain signals are safe and long-lasting. Some last for years, but others break down quickly. Another challenge is making BCIs wireless. Right now, they need cables to connect to computers, which can be bulky and risky for infection. Researchers are working on better materials to fix all these problems. And of course, there's a design issue. Wearing a cap with cable sticking out in public would be kind of ridiculous. So we also have to figure out how to make BCIs more discreet. Perhaps we could build them into glasses or earphones. Plus, both the BCI and the user need to learn from each other. The BCI learns to understand the brain's signals, while the user learns how to control the BCI. It's a continuous learning process, so it'll need a lot of fine-tuning. Despite advancements, there's a debate about whether we've reached peak distraction. A lot of young people are showing less and less concentration levels due to all the modern tech. Some people argue that we should focus on less screen time and more human connection. Smart goggles or glasses could offer a middle ground. They allow for distraction while integrating technology into daily life. Time will show whether we need to prioritize human connection or technological convenience. I think I vote for human connection. How about you? That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.